Right, we can start our meeting. <coughs> we only have one item on our agenda today. That's regulation of workshops carrying out repair and maintenance of liquefied petroleum gas vehicles. And this meeting will last from 9 a.m. to 10.25 a.m. Please invite the government officials to come in. Please invite the government representatives to come in. The panel on transport welcomes very much the representatives from the government. Well, we've never seen representatives from so many government departments. Let me introduce them. We have the Deputy Secretary for Transport and Housing for Transport, Ms. Ivy Law, the Principal Assistant Secretary for Transport and Housing for Transport, Ms. Amy Chan, the Principal Assistant Secretary for the Environment on Energy, Mrs. Dorothy Ma Chow, Mr. Eric Pang, Assistant Director from the Electrical and Mechanical Services Department, and then Mr. Eddie Pack, Chief Engineer, also from the EMSD, and then Mr. Kuhn. Chi Ming, Assistant Director from the Buildings Department, Mr. Robert Lau, Assistant Director of the Fire Services Department, Ms. Masella Lee, Assistant Commissioner for Transport, and Mr. Wu Wai Hong, Assistant Commissioner, Labor Department, and Mr. Kenneth Chan from the EPD. Well, maybe you can do an introduction. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members. The operation of workshops for repairing and maintaining vehicles have to satisfy a number of laws under different government bureaus and departments. For example, as mentioned in the paper, storage of dangerous goods regulated under the Dangerous Goods Ordinance, DGO, occupational safety and health of employees under the Factories and Industrial Undertakings Ordinance, CAP 59, and the Occupational Safety and Health Ordinance, Location, building, and fire safety under the buildings department. And then the vehicle workshops which carry out repair and maintenance works are further under the gas safety ordinance. This is not rare. When restaurants and eateries apply for a license, they're subject to different laws. They have to satisfy all the statutory requirements before getting a license. So today we have the Environment Bureau, EMSD, Buildings Department, FSD, Transport Department, and the EPD, as well as the Labor Department here, to address members' concern in relation to their respective jurisdictions. And then to enhance the service quality and standard of the industry, the government has always promoted a voluntary registration schemes. In 2007 and 2013, we got this voluntary registration scheme for vehicle mechanics and the charter, as well as the voluntary registration scheme for vehicle workshops. So, so much for my brief introduction. Is it that every department will say a few words, or are you here mainly to answer members' questions? Well, we're here mainly to answer members' questions. All right, we have one hour and 25 minutes for questions. So, as a staff, five minutes each. Gary Fan, Chen Kam Lam, Wong Kok Heng, Michael Ting, Tan Ka Piu, Pun Xiu Ping, Frankie Yik. So, we have a great deal of time today. Mr. Wu Chi Wai? 
All right. First, Mr. Gary Fan, thank you, Chairman. Earlier in Chiwan Shan, we got this explosion in a garage affecting residential units. So many people are worried that these may be time bombs in our city, and the government has to do something to allay public worries and fears. Paragraph 7 of the paper mentions, as mentioned just now, there is uh, this charter scheme. Ever since 2013, only 440 workshops signed the charter. In Hong Kong, we have around 2,700 such workshops. So it's less than 20 percent. Does the government understand that this voluntary registration scheme is not effective enough? Will you review your programs and schemes? And how will you handle this very low registration rate of 20 percent? And as for the voluntary registration scheme for vehicle mechanics, the EMSD will only enhance sudden checks on registered workshops. Will this continue to reduce the incentive for registration of workshops? And in Hong Kong, there are eight, more than 18,000 LPG taxis, but only 29 statutory workshops. Therefore, many LPG taxis are repaired and maintained in unregistered workshops, which are very near to residential areas. So after the Chiwan Shan explosion, how will the government address this problem? That is to step up regulation of these unregistered workshops. Concerning the registration of workshops, for these vehicles, there are different pieces of legislation to regulate different work procedures for these workshops. For example, we have uh, this gas safety ordinance for areas related to gas safety, and we did try to enhance their service standard to make sure that they're under the best operational practices. For the operation of these workshops, the requirements are all in accordance with the laws, nothing to do with the voluntary registration scheme. Mr. Fan mentioned that only 400 odd such workshops voluntarily signed the charter. Well, back then, we discussed with the industry and reported to the panel on transport. We tried to adopt a gradual and orderly approach. We first registered the mechanics and then the workshops. Ever since the launching of the voluntary charter, the EMSD has continuously reviewed the situation. Why is it that the charter is not so popular? It's because we cannot break down these workshops into finer categories. So upon registration, such workshops are categorized in accordance with their size, and the industry can voluntarily observe service standards above statutory requirements. For example, what are the best practices in terms of customer services, repair and maintenance records, etc.? So, the existing regulatory regime on workshop safety is not affected. What do you mean by lack of categorization? The charter does not require the workshops to be categorized into large, small, and medium-sized workshops. The charter only covers the code of practice. Well, we have another round. You don't need to hurry. I mean the practice guidelines. They have the practice guidelines. The Environment Bureau or the EMSD can address environmental concerns. All right, EPD first. I'd like to thank the Honorable Member for his question. For the registered 29 workshops, 
they can store up to 130 liter LPG tanks. For LPG taxis, for their repair and maintenance, that are not confined to these 29 workshops. Maybe I should defer to the EMSD for the details. Yes, Mr. Pang from the EMSD. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Perhaps I should say something about the safety requirements for gas safety. Under the gas safety ordinance, if a storage container exceeds 130 liters for the LPG, then Notification is required. The construction and use of such a storage container must have the approval of the EMSD. That means if a workshop has such a storage equipment, it has to obtain approval from the EMSD. Therefore, at present, we have 29 workshops with such equipment that are approved. So not 571, but 29. Will 571 cover all the notifiable gas storage equipment, like uh, petrol filling stations, oil depot, etc.? For vehicular workshops as such, we now have 29 registered workshops. The storage capacity is larger for them, so at the same time, they can handle more vehicular repair and maintenance work. If the storage capacity is less than 130 litres, then under the law, they don't need special approval from the EMSD. But the lesser level of storage doesn't mean that the risk can be reduced. It's just similar to the storage allowed for domestic use, and if the capacity does not exceed 130 litres, then in relation to the um, maintenance repair of LPG vehicle fuel system or associated components, uh, it, the, it must be carried out by a competent person of class 6. And such competent persons must uh, have receive, uh, received uh, training um, by, uh, under programs approved by the VTC. And the, the person must possess relevant practical experience of three years so that the competent person is familiar with the procedure. So although there are 18,000 LPG taxis in Hong Kong, we um, envisage that the um, existing maintenance or garages in Hong Kong should be able to cope with the maintenance. All right, Mr. Chen Kem Lam. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, obviously, after the Chi Wen San incident, the government has launched a voluntary registration scheme for vehicle maintenance workshops. I understand that this is supposed to be a temporary measure. And the public is actually looking forward for a long-term initiative rather than a voluntary registration scheme because we have been receiving many complaints at the downstairs of residential premises. There are these vehicle maintenance workshops creating noise and uh, carrying out uh, um, paint spraying work, causing the uh, emission of uh, unknown gas and also the, the problem of illegal parking. And we're put on a tight spot in handling these complaints. This is the reality. And we can see this situation happening across the territory. And under building regulations, such situations is allowed. So we need to find a long-term solution. I wonder if the government has considered this. After a transition period, there should be a mandatory scheme such that these maintenance workshops at the downstairs of residential premises should be relocated to other saver premises to comply with the relevant requirements. 
because according to NXC, no building used or designed for domestic purposes shall also be used as a motor repair shop. However, um, there are many buildings with com um, which ha have commercial space downstairs and domestic premises upstairs. And these workshops repair vehicles uh, instead of selling vehicles. So this is a concern, and I want to know if the government has a long-term solution to the problem. Well, thank you for the question. Um, it's correct to say that uh, after the incident ha in Wong Tai Sin, we uh, launched the voluntary registration scheme for vehicle maintenance workshops. And according to para 7 of the paper, and pair of six and seven in 2004 and 2005, the government had been discussing with the trade, and the government had also reported to the panel. It, the government found it necessary to launch a voluntary registration scheme in order to enhance um, the standard of uh, the vehicle maintenance trade and compliance has been good, for example, for paint spraying and other repair work in workshops. The spraying of paint is not allowed, and the representatives from the Labor Department can respond to that, and the Buildings Department's representatives can respond to the other point. As for whether there is any plan to turn the voluntary registration scheme to a mandatory one in the long term, in para 8 and para 9, we also mentioned that after a year, we will review the voluntary registration scheme for vehicle maintenance workshop. And the EMSD will also conduct a survey to gauge the general acceptance by the trade and the public in respect of the mandatory registration. And a regulatory impact assessment will also be carried out to assess the feasibility of um, mandating the registration of vehicle workshops and also the effectiveness. However, we must emphasize that uh, it's not the case that uh, because we do not have a mandatory scheme, there is no legal requirement either because um, different government departments overseeing different regulations already uh, imposing legal requirements. So I'll defer to other colleagues to uh, answer the member's question. Uh, I'm representing the Labor Department, and um, I want to respond to the point about uh, body painting or body uh, spraying. And I want to respond by saying that uh, this uh, task is quite uh, dangerous, so it is not suitable uh, for it to be carried out in workshops in the downstairs of domestic premises. So um, a notice will be issued uh, by the Labor Department in short to ban such um, tasks uh, being carried out in uh, maintenance workshops in the downstairs of domestic premises. Mr. Wong Kohing, I have two questions for government officials. On the 13th of May, at a council meeting, the EMSD, the FSD said that in the coming weeks, inspections would be carried out on all the 2,700 vehicle maintenance workshops. So now I have the opportunity to ask this question because we're approaching the end of July. So the EMSD and FSD, have you inspected all these 2,700 vehicle maintenance workshops? And have you identified any problems after the inspection? Second question is for the Transport and Housing Bureau. Well, to regulate or to inspect the registered vehicle maintenance workshops, inspections must be carried out by different government departments. However, each government department has its own uh, purview. 
The government departments include um, the Labor Department, Buildings Department, EMSD, uh, EPD, etc. At least six departments are involved. So instead of um, each government department checking on the each area, can you have a lead department to oversee all the aspects instead of six government departments checking for six different areas because the vehicle maintenance workshops may not be able to cope with frequent inspections. One day, uh, one department may come, and then the following day, another department may come for inspection again. And there may be omissions. So if there is a department coordinating all the work, uh, overseeing all the six aspects, then uh, this will streamline the process and make things clearer. So this is a question for the Bureau. Thank you, Chairman. Two questions. Who would take the question? I will invite the EMSD and FSD to say something about inspections first. So, Mr. Pang or Mr. Lau? Well, the EMSD will take the question. After the incident in May, uh, in, in April, EMSD has stepped up the inspection, and in the end of June, we completed the inspection work of 2,700 vehicle maintenance workshops. We uh, inspected and uh, to, to see if the workshops were complying with the gas safety ordinance. For example, whether the storage of gas had exceeded the permitted level and the repair of uh, the vehicle uh, the, uh, fuel tank systems um, should be carried out by a competent person in class six. And should other irregularities um, be identified, we will refer the case to other de departments like the Fire Services Department for follow-up action. Similarly, uh, when inspections are carried out by other government departments, um, should they uh, identify any irregularities relating to gas safety, they will also refer the cases to the EMSD for follow-up action. FSD, anything to add? Well, um, our inspections are mainly about um, the storage of dangerous goods and we inspected over 3,000 times uh, over the past few months, and we inspected all the workshops. Well, some workshops uh, were closed at the time of, of inspection, and uh, we went back uh, uh, subsequently. And we uh, also um, found six cases uh, of uh, uh, storing uh, storage of uh, Excessive dangerous goods, and we will take follow-up action. So the EMSD and FSD have inspected all these 2,700 workshops. Now, what about the next question? Will there be a coordinated depart the um, department um, for inspections? Now, after the explosion incident in Kuangtai Sen, the government has already set up um, an interdepartmental team to. Uh, work on the issue, and as I understand, several government departments have also issued joint guidelines for vehicle maintenance workshops in domestic premises. So can the inspections be carried out by the interdepartmental team from now on, instead of uh, having six inspections on six different days by different departments? We'll go, we will go back and consider your suggestion. Um, Next, my turn. I have a number of questions, mainly for the EMSD. My understanding is this. Now, if the workshop stores less than 130 litres of LPG, uh, the workshop will not be subject to any regulation. Is that right? Well, Chairman, even if uh, the workshop stores less than 130 litres, it is still subject to regulation because according to the uh, practical guidelines for vehicle maintenance workshops uh, of LPG vehicles, there are some basic requirements that such workshops should follow. And we will also um, heed to the uh, code of practice of, of the guidelines in carrying inspections to ensure compliance. 
So that means uh, to repair LPG vehicles or the fuel system, you need to have competent persons of class 1 and class 6. There are only 29 uh, such workshops. For other workshops, even if competent persons of class 1 and class 6 are employed, they are not eligible. Um, they they are not eligible for uh, repairing such vehicles. Yes, for maintenance work involving the LPG fuel tank or fuel system, uh, it should be carried out by a class 6 person or it should be carried out under the supervision of the uh, person. So, the, so, so the answer is yes. It's very simple. Let's say if you want to repair the LPG fuel tank or the components or the fuel system, uh, they must be such work must be carried out in twenty nine vehicle maintenance workshops, otherwise it's illegal. Well, there are five as uh, fuel tank workshops um, in which these works are to be carried out. What about owners of LPG fuel cylinders? They are required to examine the cylinder at least once every five years. However. For those requiring inspections twice a year, examination twice a year, uh, we're talking about regular maintenance. And these 29 workshops can carry out the examination. Because apart from repair, they usually exceed 130 liters in terms of storage. And for those storing less than 130 liters, it would be one inspection every five years. Well, for those storing above 130 liters and are in the maintenance and repair industry, we now have 29 registered workshops because the risks involved are higher. Well, let please answer my question. You mentioned twice in the paper. So for every workshop storing less than 130 liters, it will be one inspection every five years. Well, car owners have to test their tanks and inspect their tanks once every five years. For those workshops storing below 130 liters, do you inspect them? What's the frequency? Were above 130 liters twice a year. What, what about those below 130 liters? Those below 130 liters will be inspected under certain circumstances. Sometimes these workshops may replace their LPG tanks. If just one LPG vehicle tank is involved, not exceeding 130 liters, then that can be conducted in a normal workshop, ordinary workshop. Well, I'm talking about routine inspection. That is, no report is necessary for you. Those below 130 liters, that is 571 minus 29. If we receive complaints, oh, that means only upon receiving complaints, you won't proactively inspect them. So there are huge differences between the 29 registered workshops and the remaining ones. Why do you draw a line at 130 liters. In the gas safety ordinance, that is specified. If the storage capacity is below 130 liters, the risks involved are lower. I understand. But for the workshop in the incident, it's not within the 29 registered workshops. So it belongs to the remaining ones. Now that the incident was so serious, will it be that even for those storing below 130 liters, risks can be high? Take, for example, type, if type 6 personnel are, in, if class 6 personnel are involved, there may not be any problems. We immediately stepped up inspection after the incident. At the end of June, we completed the inspection of the 2,700 workshops. 
One of the foci of our uh, inspection exercise was whether or not the workshop is repairing, uh, repairing and maintaining vehicles. If so, has the workshop employed a class six competent persons? And the workshop will not repair and maintain LPG tanks. From May to July, we already distributed certificates and documents of certification to these competent persons, class six. And then there are also identity cards for them. Certificates have had to be displayed in the workshop such that car owners can easily identify whether or not their workshop employs competent persons class 6. There are also certified labels to verify that these workshops are eligible or qualified to repair and maintain LPG vehicles and competent persons class 6 are employed. Mr. Tankapu. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, the EMSD mentioned a number of tasks which were only carried out after the incident in Chiwan Shan. So that incident reflected the problems. Will there be any recurrence? Even the industry is worried. I'm not an engineer. In 1988, 1998 to 1999, the policy paper says that our laws require LPG workshops storing LPG and repairing and maintaining vehicles such as LPG vehicles, LPG tanks, converters, and accessories, etc. Under the gas safety ordinance, they are notifiable gas storage equipment. So in general, the 2,000 workshops could only repair and maintain the non-fuel portions of a vehicle. Non-fuel portions of a vehicle. For the very crucial fuel tank and its replacement and installation a registered workshop is required. And according to your assessment, then, you need 60 vehicle workshops of different size. And these workshops have to be registered and approved. You cannot open such a workshop anywhere. Say, if I'm a doctor, can I perform an operation in a conference room? No, I must perform a surgery in a hospital. And now for 1,000, for these 1,000 competent persons, class six, they can carry out repair and maintenance any, in any workshop. Once this incident is forgotten, there won't be any more inspections. As the EMSD told us, before that incident, there was no inspection. Say, in a year or so, people have forgotten the incident and we may have a recurrence. For the specified LPG workshops which require your approval, they need crucial um, equipment like a shaft and devices for ventilation. LPG is heavier than air. so. That's just a simple design. Many workshops may have shafts also. They may have employed competent persons class six. So what should happen to them? I regret that many departments, including the Environment Bureau, have not answered my questions in my letters. Now, that's not the major cause of the Chiwan San incident. How many CP class 6 are employed by how many workshops? I understand that many of these competent persons class 6 
were hired many years ago and might have retired. So, have you moved the goalpost? Have you relaxed the requirements? Now, how many workshops have actually hired competent persons, class six? How many have you conducted any investigation yet? Who will answer this? Environment Bureau. I'll first provide an answer, and I'll defer to the EMSD for the details. As mentioned just now, a letter came in. It's not just we did not reply to it. The letter came last week, involving statistics for the past five years, law enforcement by the EMSD, and. Information from the EPD, so we need time to collect the information. We have to make sure that the information is correct before we issue a reply. I understand that the data are almost ready, so we'll send Mr. Tang a reply. Now, where is the goalpost? Just now, Mr. Pang, colleague from the EMSD, already said that all along the goalpost was like this, under the gas safety ordinance. They try to enforce the requirements, so there's no question of moving the goal post. As for the 1,000 odd competent persons, class six, the EMSD does have a record of them. These people have to provide information about their employers, so the EMSD knows where they work. Besides, the EMSD also requires these persons to. Notify the EMSD within 28 days of their changing employers. For, for, so for these 1,100 odd persons, the EMSD does have information on where they work. Mr. Tang is worried that we may forget everything after the incident. No, that won't happen. As Mr. Pang of the EMSD explained, administratively, we'll see how we can enhance regulation. Previously. We might not know where the 1,100 odd persons worked. That's why the EMSD had issued certificates to them. Such certificates should be displayed properly, such that car owners and the like know where to repair and maintain their vehicles. As for vehicle owners and drivers. They are informed what the statutory requirements are, and they should fetch qualified persons to repair and maintain their vehicles. So it's not just a question of the competent persons, class six. Their patrons, namely car owners and drivers, should know the details. I'll defer to Mr. Pang of the EMSD for the details. Will please be quick. According to the gas safety ordinance for gas supply regulation, if a storage container exceeds 130 liters, then it's a notifiable installation, a notifiable gas installations. The MSD always enforce that ordinance and the regulations. Exceeding 130 liters, the design has to be approved. So that has always been done all along. At the moment, the modus operandi of the industry is that LPG storage and installation are done together. Oh, Deputy Chairman, you have exceeded your five minutes. If you want to pursue your question, please wait for another round. Please finish it. Well, we've all along acted in accordance with statutory requirements. The industry previously reflected their views to us. In as early as 2005, we explained to the industry our explanation for workshops storing more than 130 liters. They are notifiable gas installations. And vetting and approval are required because of the notifiable gas installations. Mr. Pun Xiuping, thank you, Chairman. In Hong Kong, we have 2,700 vehicle workshops, 9,100 mechanics. The paper says that in 
the Bureau launched the Voluntary Registration Scheme for Vehicle Mechanics, and over 6,300 vehicle mechanics were registered. And then only 440 signatories for the Voluntary Vehicle Maintenance Workshops Charter Scheme. In 2013, the feedback was not satisfactory. So now, for this voluntary registration scheme for the workshops, what incentives are there to attract them to register? May I refer you to NXG? Voluntary registration scheme for vehicle maintenance workshops. For type 4, no new application will be considered three years after the launch of the scheme. Now, if they don't register within those three years, will you allow them to operate repair and maintenance, maintenance workshop in residential units or blocks? Well, of course, after the LPG explosion, Members were of the public were concerned. The EMSD said there are 600, 700 odd inspections, and fire services department thousands of inspections. What about the EPD buildings department, or even the transport department? Of course, we don't yet know the cause of the incident. But in the past. Did you know the situation of the problem? For example, after inspection, did the Labour Department take out any prosecution or other actions? For the first question, for the charter scheme, apparently the feedback was not enthusiastic. I'll defer to the EMSD. Uh, Mr. Poon also mentioned just now that uh, in relation to Type 4, under the new voluntary registration scheme, after three years, they will not be allowed to uh, be registered. Does it mean that uh, they will be barred from, um, from uh, operation under the law? Well, uh, as mentioned just now, they are required to abide by the practice guidelines, uh, which will remain the same. And for vehicle maintenance workshops operating in domestic uh, the downstairs of domestic practices we have uh, practice guidelines um, which is on top of the best practice and this is the arrangement and I'll now defer to the MSD to say something about the charter scheme and the latest re voluntary registration scheme to encourage workshops to register voluntarily um, thank you chairman Now, about voluntary, the voluntary registration scheme for vehicle maintenance workshops, um, an advisory committee on vehicle maintenance uh, have made has made recommendations to the government and the um, vehicle maintenance technical advisory committee uh, comprises representatives from the trade, from vehicle uh, workshops, and they are very familiar with the trade and they have recommended to the government that the scheme should be taken forward in a progressive manner and that is why at first we launched a charter scheme and after some 400 vehicle maintenance workshops joined they conducted a review on um, the lackluster response of the charter scheme and according to the trade uh, they because the charter scheme does not uh, classify workshops into different types and different sizes, and uh, it seems that uh, it is not uh, possible to distinguish the size and uh, the type of vehicle work uh, maintenance workshops. So uh, under the new voluntary registration scheme, there are different types based on size and capacity of the workshops, so that consumers can make uh, uh, informed decisions uh, on which uh, workshops to patronize based on the uh, types, the information of the types 
of registration. And taking this progressive approach, in July we launched the voluntary registration scheme for workshops. <coughs> And uh, after the, the um, in-depth review conducted by the advisory committee on the trade, we believe that this scheme will receive a more positive response. Mr. Frankie Yik. Well, it seems that the answers were not uh, clear uh, just now. Now, after rolling out the voluntary registration scheme for vehicle maintenance workshops for three years, um, if the vehicle workshops fail to register as type 4, then, then the workshops will no longer be eligible for registration. So what happens afterward? Well, the voluntary registration scheme is not a licensing mechanism. Uh, it only seeks to encourage the trade to register with us. Um, maybe I can defer to the buildings department to answer your question. Oh, no need. Uh, I just want to make sure that even without registration, as long as the workshops comply with um, other uh, regulations, uh, the, they can still operate. Now, according to the trade, they are also under a lot of pressure, so they would like to see some accreditation scheme in place. Because um, even the landlord would say that the tenancy will not be renewed and they should uh, go somewhere else. So uh, the trade hopes that the government can come up with a um, certification scheme so that the public would know that these workshops are qualified workshops um, and that they're safe. And yet this is just a voluntary registration scheme. It's not even a mandatory one. Yes, at the moment, this is a voluntary registration scheme. But I heard from the trade that it seems that they don't mind having a mandatory registration scheme. Yes, that is the case. As our paper suggests, the EMSD will conduct a survey to gauge the response of the trade and the public and to assess the benefits of mandating the registration of workshops. Now, there are two questions, or there are two issues. I don't know whether you're aware of that. Now, for Type 4 workshops, they're located mostly on the downstairs of domestic premises, and they are mostly situated in uh, old districts. Now, we have more and more vehicles um, the maintenance and repair must be carried out in Hong Kong. They cannot take the vehicle to Shenzhen for repair. So what is the government's plan in this regard? For example, in new development areas or in redevelopment projects, is the government going to uh, adopt the concept of a repair area or repair city? Because I would say if you buy a new car, you can have a five-year warranty. What what happens after um, five years? This, if you don't have enough workshops, the ve these um, older vehicles may not be uh, repaired, and there is a risk to road safety. Now, as for the voluntary scheme, um, the for vehicle mechanics. Well, the response is quite good. Um, you have a 70% of the total number of mechanics registered. When are you going to launch a mandatory scheme? And is there any initiative to improve the qualification framework so as to attract more young people to join the trade? Thank you, Chairman. Now, responding to Mr. Yick's question as to whether there is a certification system the registration system itself is some sort of a uh, quality mark system as in commercial or business transactions because it shows that uh, the workshops are complying with the best practice of the guidelines now for type 4 now the best practice states that 
the workshops must comply with all the legal requirements in Hong Kong, whereas for Type 4, the work workshops only pledge to endeavor to abide by the practice guidelines. But we hope that through the voluntary registration scheme, um, they, they, we can enhance the standard of the trade. As for the concept of um, repair and maintenance city, well, there are clear uh, stipulations in the law regarding the locations of workshops. Um, the government is, I mean, it's not appropriate for the government to intervene in this regard. And um, um, I think the member is also uh, aware that there is a suggestion of um, optimizing the uh, or maximizing the use of brown sites in the new territories. And some brown sites are used as we call maintenance yards at the moment. And there is a suggestion on whether we can set up maintenance workshops in multi-story buildings. And uh, the Development Bureau will conduct a study in this regard. And they're looking at brown sites at the moment. As for voluntary registration for vehicle mechanics, how we can uh, further boost the, the registration rate, I'll defer to my colleague to take your question. Uh, on the voluntary registration scheme for vehicle mechanics, so far over 70% of the total number of vehicle mechanics in Hong Kong have been registered. And we also understand from the trade that they would like to have a mandatory registration scheme. However, this mandatory scheme should go hand in hand with a mandatory registration scheme for vehicle maintenance workshops. Because if you only mandate, ve mandate the registration of vehicle mechanics, it's not fair to them as they will have to show the, all the legal um, liabilities. And in order to enhance the standard of vehicle maintenance, it depends very much on whether Owners of vehicle maintenance workshops can provide all the facilities needed and uh, all the information needed for them to follow the, the practice guidelines. So the views of the trade is that if there is a voluntary, uh, or the, if there is a mandatory registration scheme for vehicle maintenance workshops, then um, more vehicle mechanics will be ready to register. And we have launched the voluntary registration scheme for some time, uh, and uh, we have been issuing newsletters um, and uh, giving out messages to encourage them to register under the scheme. Mr. Wu Chi Wai, thank you, Chairman. Now I've been here throughout the meeting and uh, so far. What I've heard is that there will be a voluntary registry or there is a voluntary registration scheme for vehicle maintenance workshops and a survey will be conducted in a year's time. Now my question is that um, the trade unanimously um, agree that, that there should be a mandatory registration system. So why are we still wasting time with a voluntary registration system? And as for voluntary registration for vehicle mechanics, according to the paper submitted to the LegCo in 2005, a review should have been conducted and uh, the government should work towards a mandatory registration scheme. So many years have passed. What has the government done in um, transitioning from a voluntary registration scheme to a mandatory registration scheme? Why are we still waiting after seven years? Why can't the government kickstart the legislative process? so as to improve the vehicle maintenance trade standards? Now that's the first question. As for the second question, about the workshops participating in the vehicle maintenance workshops charter scheme, comparing to workshops which have not subscribed to the charter scheme, is there any difference between the, um, the legal requirements and the inspection requirements? I want a written reply. Please set out clearly in the paper the differences. Otherwise, I don't see how you 
can incentivize vehicle workshops to register with you. EMSD? Thank you, Chairman. Now, regarding the registration scheme, Mr. Wu mentioned that the government has not done anything since 2007. I don't think this is correct. In 2013, the EMSD launched a voluntary uh, vehicle maintenance workshop charter scheme. And in fact, the EMSC representative mentioned a technical advisory committee for vehicle maintenance. And they have been liaising closely with the trade. And they have uh, been uh, working on uh, improving the standard of the trade. And in 2013, they rolled out a uh, charter scheme. And in July this year, we rolled out a voluntary registration scheme for vehicle maintenance workshops. Sorry to interject, but according to the paper submitted by the government to the panel, um, in 2008, it was said that a review would be conducted, but had any papers been submitted to LegCo since then on the review? We don't have information at hand, but according to what I know, the ETWB, the Environment, Transport and Works Bureau then, reported to the LegCo panel on transport Uh, that uh, there were divergent views from the trade on whether there should be a mandatory registration scheme for vehicle maintenance workshops. And at that time, it was said that a progressive approach should be uh, or gradual approach should be taken. Yes, I know that. But it's also said that a review would be conducted in 2008 and a re review report would be submitted on how to take on this gradual approach. Well, yes, we can go back and check the papers. But most importantly, the uh, Technical Advisory Committee for Vehicle Maintenance uh, have, has been communicating with the trade and uh, the voluntary rec registration scheme is recommended. Uh, do you, uh, it has been going on since 2008. Yes, I I have a follow-up question. Well, just now I heard from the, the EMSD that um, the uh, response was not very good because uh, of um, the uh, lack of distinction between the size of vehicle maintenance workshops. How, when will you resolve this problem? Uh, Mr. Pang, it's like this. After the launching of the Charter Scheme, according to the Advisory Committee, under which there's a Research and Development Working Group, that's only after 2013 you discovered that the size of the workshop is the crucial element. At the end of 2013, when we conducted a review, we heard views from the industry that uh, there are not different differentiated into different sizes. So when did you know that the size is the crux of the matter? In 2007, we launched the voluntary registration scheme for vehicle mechanics. Then we reviewed the system. At that time, the industry told us something about the registration of vehicle workshops. At that time, the feedback from the industry was that if only mechanics but not workshops are registered, then quality and standard cannot be enhanced. Well, Mr. Chairman, we heard that already. All along, my question is, is the size of the workshop crucial? Please wait for your second round. Please finish with your answer. The advisory committee then decided to proceed with uh, the registration of workshops. But due to this gradual and orderly approach, practice guidelines have to be promulgated first and then the charter scheme, and then the present voluntary registration scheme. As for the concern about big, small, and medium-sized workshops, as at the end of 2013, the industry was telling us that if it's only a charter scheme, 
the incentive would not be sufficient because of a lack of an effective classification system. Next, Dr. Lo Wai Kwok. In 1998, we started to launch the LPG vehicle scheme. There's a great deal of public consultation at that time because members of the public are concerned about safety issues, like the safety of vehicles running on our roads, as well as ancillary measures and facilities. I can't remember the details. I can't remember either on what occasions we participated in such discussions. For the LPG filling stations, we had a great deal of explanation. As for maintenance and repair, there are a number of safety issues like ventilation. We heard that if LPG vehicles are to be repaired and maintained in a particular workshop, special hoardings might be required. Well, we're in a serious lack of ancillary measures and facilities, and regulation is too relaxed. For example, we heard that we don't have sufficient filling stations, and many taxi drivers have to spend their precious business time on queuing up for LPG filling. And now, these workshops are in question. I don't know whether a particular workshop has hired competent person, persons class 6. I don't even know if a workshop is safe. Say if I'm a driver, an owner, how can I differentiate among the different types of workshops? I'm not worried about the 29 approved vehicle workshops for storing above 130 litres of LPG. I'm not worried about the five LPG tank workshops either. I believe regulation is better for them. But very simple, we have 1,100 competent persons, class 6. Some of them are qualified but are not in the industry. They are not just hired by those 29 workshops. They're distributed among the other workshops as well. I put forth this question. So many LPG taxis are being repaired and maintained in these workshops. Members of the public often see LPG taxis being repaired and maintained in their building. Well, if the work does not involve LPG, say if only a lamp or a certain part of the vehicle is repaired or maintained, then probably there's no problem. So my question is, for those workshops with a storage capacity below 130 litres, they have to hire competent persons class 6 if they want to repair and maintain LPG vehicles. What are the requirements imposed on them? Statutory requirements or requirements or self-disciplinary requirements. Well, if you don't have any requirement, then you're telling lies during the consultation exercise. Maybe the Environment Bureau or the EMSD can reply. Environment Bureau, well, just a brief reply first, Mr. Chairman. LPG vehicles have been introduced for quite some time. Apart from statutory requirements, the EMSD has promulgated different codes and guidelines. And just very recently, the code was updated. Maybe I should defer to Mr. Pang of the EMSD. Yes, Mr. Pang, you again. For the repair and maintenance of LPG vehicles, ever launch, ever since the LPG vehicles were launched, we've published four codes. The first one is for repair and maintenance workshops. A second one about LPG fuel review. 
and then the dumping of LPG tanks, and then LPG vehicular fuel system and repair and maintenance guidelines or code. For vehicle workshops, we have this particular guide for them. And after a recent review, we put it very clear that even for ordinary workshops with no notifiable gas installations, there are certain requirements imposed on them. For example, they must have handheld detectors for LPG, proper piping, proper ventilation, and proper fire installations. Apart from these requirements, other departments enforce other pieces of legislation. The MSD will launch joint operations with other departments. If anything is detected, we may refer the case to other departments. Yes, for those storing 130 liters or above, there are statutory requirements. For those storing below 130 liters, we also have guidelines for them. If any person breaches the guidelines, we'll see whether a prosecution should be taken out and the incident will be reported to relevant departments like the Buildings Department to see whether there's sufficient evidence to call for appropriate action to be taken. Mr. Chairman, whether or not a vehicle workshop is repairing and maintaining LPG taxis or minibuses, they shouldn't be in composite buildings or residential buildings. That's why the Town Planning Board, in terms of distribution of uses, said that these vehicle workshops are industrial uses. We now have thousands of these workshops. How many of them are in industrial buildings? How many in composite buildings? Like that in the Chiwan Shan incident. And just now the government told us that there are a number of laws to regulate this issue. Take, for example, the Fire Services Department will take care of certain aspects, the EMSD will take care of other aspect other aspects, etc. etc. Well, can such workshops operate in composite buildings and residential buildings if they satisfy certain requirements? Well, the planning department has to make sure that the use is good enough. Well, if the workshop does not accept the requirements, it has to be eliminated. And then can we have uniform policies on the part of different government departments. Well, Mr. Chairman, vehicular repair and maintenance shouldn't be too near, shouldn't be carried out too near to residential units. That's not appropriate. As for prosecution, may we have the figures for the past three years and for the breaches, what's the penalty? Very often, we now rely on the Buildings Department for law enforcement. Well, we all heard of occupation permits, but for a ground floor premises, a lot of users can be put to it. So if you have no laws to rely on to eliminate the offenders, then the problem cannot be solved. So I'd like to understand more about government policies. Does the government agree that such workshops should not be in composite buildings? They should be in factory buildings. 
And then for breaches in terms of users, is the government a toothless tiger? And these workshops will be left to there. And what about the conditions in the land leases? Have you ever considered enforcing them? In recent times, we heard that the government had been very stringent on the uses of factory buildings. So we'd like to know whether or not the government has done enough in terms of law enforcement, and we want prosecution figures. Well, the information required involves a number of departments. Well, we can give some verbal answers now, but maybe it's better to have a written reply. Do you accept a written reply? Yes, sir, but I would like to know whether the government agrees that such vehicle workshops should not be operating in residential units. Now, this issue is regulated by the Buildings Ordinance. The Planning Department and the Buildings Department have promulgated guidelines. They are under the Development Bureau, but the representatives of the Development Bureau cannot attend today. So maybe the Department can tell us about their policies on the location of such workshops. Planning issues and building issues involve existing buildings. Do you want the Buildings Department to respond? Oh, yes. Mr. Kuhn, well, for residential buildings and composite buildings, no vehicle workshop should be allowed. We assess the level of risks to see whether or not we should eliminate a particular vehicle workshop. If paint spraying is to be carried out, if there are other risks, we'll take action. Well, um, I have just a simple point to make. Let's say, uh, according to para 3, if they comply with all the requirements, then would they allow vehicle maintenance workshops to exist in uh, composite buildings or in uh, locations close to residential areas? Thank you, Chairman. As said just now, we ha we uh, take a um, risk-oriented management approach. If uh, th it is of a high risk, then uh, we will uh, take advice from the government department. Now, I'd like to know what the principle is. Mr. Chair, as I said just now, well, members ask questions, and after five minutes is for government officials to answer. If you're not happy with the answers, wait for your next round, because otherwise I don't know how much time should be given to you. Well, just a simple question. Will it be allowed? If they comply with all the regulations, will you allow workshops to – yes, your question has been heard. Any response? No, not allowed under the law. Next, Mr. Albert Chan. Chairman, a brief question for a brief, for a brief answer. 29 maintenance workshops, as I heard just now. Um, is it that only these tw 29 workshops can carry out RPG-related maintenance and repair, or can other workshops do it as well? Just a simple answer. Only these 29? These 29 workshops have the relevant facilities. For other workshops, if they have competent, if, if they employ um, classics, competent persons, they still can uh, carry out the maintenance and repair. So how many? Do you, you don't have um, the details? I'm talking about how many workshops. Answer me. According to our recent inspections, about 230 workshops also carry out LPG-related maintenance and repair. So it has to do with the competent person, whether there is a competent person in the, work in the workshop. Well, if the workshop employs a Class 6 person, then the workshop can repair LPG vehicles. So. Um, both have to be satisfied, the competent person and the 
uh, requirements. Don't tell me what happens recently. Just tell me brief answers. Do you have a registration scheme for the twenty nine workshops? You, you, we have issued uh, letters. Now, don't beat about the bush. Just answer me directly. I ask whether for the two hundred and thirty workshops, uh, is there a registration scheme? We are conducting a survey. So, the is the answer yes or no? And I'm not asking about a survey. Ask me. Answer me whether the the answer is yes or no. Already, uh, he has already answered. The answer is no. All right. So if the two hundred and thirty workshops are not registered, so for the two tier system that you mentioned, it's not subject to any supervision or regulation. There is no such a system. No, not correct. Because if a workshop carries out the replacement of a LPG fuel tank, answer me. In short, does the workshop has a license to carry out su uh, such work? Is there a registration system? There is no special registration scheme for such workshops. However, our requirement is that the certificate of the CP6 will have to be displayed in the workshop. So what about the class 6 competent person? Um, is, is he required to register uh, the place of, of work? Ms. Ma from the Environment Bureau. Now, we talked about the 1,100 competent person class 6. Uh, they're required to submit information to the EMSD, and the information will include uh, his employer. And as mentioned just now, the EMSD also requires. But the 1,100 CPs may not be the operators. I'm asking whether the place of work of CPs have to be registered. They're required to notify the EMSD of their place to work, place of work. So no registration, just to inform the department. Be it the uh, well, because for restaurants you have a license, but now your system is that uh, you rely on their own discipline to make to inform the department voluntarily. As long as I inform the department, then it's all right. So. You're conducting a survey, but this is only a survey. There is no licensing or registration system to ensure that the 1,100 CP6 comply with all the requirements. Is it that they're only required to inform the department? Now, for uh, CP6, Class 6 is a um, Professional qualification. I'm asking about the place of work. If you're a competent person, class six, the qualification is not related to the place of work. Well, Chairman, she hasn't answered my question at all. So, in other words, there is no registration scheme whatsoever. On the, where the Compton person or which workshops the Compton person classics work, I think the government is avoiding the questions, Mr. Jeffrey Lamb. Thank you, Chairman. Now there are issues arising from the gas explosion incident. Ever since we were young, we uh, have have been seeing uh, workshops in residential neighborhoods. In the past, vehicle maintenance is a kind of mechanical work, but now with LPG vehicles, there are dangerous goods. Uh, stored in workshops as well as vehicle uh, or LPG taxis and vehicles. Has the government considered 
changing the licensing uh, uh, scheme. Yeah, so, um, what is the crux of the problem? Has it to do with um, uh, something uh, um, something wrong with inspection or the system itself? Because if there is something wrong, it should be rectified. And what remedial measures will be taken in terms of um, supervision and inspection? Now, most of the taxis now run on LPG, but in the future there may be new forms, uh, new new types of taxis introduced to the market. And will you consider banning such maintenance workshops in residential neighborhoods? And when new Types of vehicles are introduced. Will you consider um, the possible new ways of maintenance and repair? Now, vehicles used for some time may have different problems, and the workshops may not be ready. Uh, to repair these new vehicles. So do you have any plan uh, in relation to a comprehensive um, uh, set of guidelines for new vehicles? LPG vehicles were introduced um, as a result of policy considerations. And that is for for environmental protection, and LPG vehicles are subject to the gas safety ordinance and also uh, under the purview of the EPD. And perhaps I'll defer to my colleague from EPD to answer Mr. Lam's question. As for introducing new vehicles, I think the major consideration is one of environmental protection as well. And our, our stance is neutral. We um, just work with the e Environment Bureau or the uh, EPD. Well, I don't think it's sufficient to give me an answer relating to environmental protection because I'm talking about vehicle maintenance and something to do with licenses. My question was on workshops located in residential neighborhoods and the whole maintenance procedures. Well, Mr. Lam, in fact, before you entered, they already said that uh, this issue is so complex, it involves many government departments. So w which department would you like uh, to like um, to ask? Well, maybe on the introduction of new um, green vehicles, I'll defer to the EPD colleague. Well, as I understand, my colleagues already responded to the LPG um, taxis, and we have no further comments to make. And. Uh, Perhaps I will take your view back to the department and uh, give you a written reply later. Well, on uh, the types of vehicles, it's not under the purview of the EPD, but I understand that uh, there is possible to, uh, for new types of vehicles to be introduced, such as electric cars, and that is my understanding. On maintenance. From the point of view of gas safety, if the LPG fuel tank in uh, such workshops has capacity over 130 liters, such workshops should not, not be situated in the downstairs of domestic premises. And as I understand, um, Normally, uh, the EMSD will not allow workshops to carry out such work downstairs of the uh, of residential buildings. 
Well, I'll extend the meeting by 15 minutes. We've already completed the first round. Let's start with the second round. We have Chen Kam Lam, myself, and Dr. Lo Wai Kwok for the second round. So four minutes each. We still have 15 minutes, Mr. Chen Kam Lam. Thank you, Chairman. Just now, when the Deputy Secretary replied to my question, she said that the workshops have been following all the requirements. So it seems that the government officials are happy with the situation. But you don't have a long term plan to tackle the problem of workshops in composite buildings. You only have a voluntary registration scheme. And even with the charter scheme, only 440 plus workshops out of the 2,000 uh, workshops have subscribed to the scheme. So, uh, and there isn't a much uh, d uh, of a di much difference, even if you registered. And uh, there is no differentiation between larger and smaller workshops. So there is no incentive for workshops to register with you. As a vehicle owner, I would go for a workshop with some quality assurance. But there is no such system in place. You need to do something to incentivize workshops to register with you. And there should also be a, a system for consumers to differentiate between uh, the good ones and bad ones, and the good ones being those registered. Otherwise, you're just um, de uh, you're just um, deceiving yourself um, by having this registration scheme. So the government should give this a further thought. Laid over. Yes, as the chairman said, with so many officials with us today, but we have to set thresholds to regulate the licensing regime. Instead of having different bureaus and departments doing their respective job only. For example, you mentioned that if there's spray, if there's paint spraying, you conduct an inspection. But honestly speaking, when your people arrive, the paint spraying will have finished already. And the problem is we do have such vehicle workshops on the ground floor of residential buildings. You have to act on Mr. Frankie Yick's remarks. Well, even when vehicle workshops are in factory buildings, there are also problems. In the old industrial areas, car parking spaces, road design, etc., have led to a number of problems. Not safety problems, but perhaps congestion problems. In Yip Street, there are three lanes, but on one lane, there are always vehicles parked. So just two lanes remain. So you have to think about all these problems. Thank you very much for Mr. Chan's remarks. We very much agree with Mr. Chan that a QMark system is good for the public. Precisely because of this, we launched the Charter Scheme in 2013. The response was not enthusiastic, so the EMSD launched the Voluntary Registration Scheme for Vehicle Workshops. Upon registration, the workshop concerned has to display a label, and the registration has to be renewed once every three years. Besides, best practices have to be adopted. That's on top of statutory requirements. If there's any complaint, the EMSD may consider revoking the registration. So we'll head towards that direction. 
It's now my turn. During the first round, I asked a question and heard something from you. Now, for these vehicle workshops, if the storage capacity is below 130 liters, basically they don't need to notify you. And then there's the ceiling of 450 liters. You got 571, and the number ex of workshops exceeding 130 liters, 29. All right, Mr. Pang, you mentioned risk issues. Apparently, for those storing less than 130 liters, it's not so serious. But for those storing more than 130 liters, it's more serious. So you draw the line there. All right, I asked about the inspection annually, twice a year, for. 2,671 vehicle workshops. You don't proactively inspect them. Well, let's not talk about the biannual inspections. You don't even inspect them once every two years, or once every five years, for the 2,671 workshops. If they store more than 130 liters, if they don't notify you, you won't know them. And then, for the buildings department, under Cap One Two Three, Buildings Ordinance, you won't regulate them if they don't report to you. If they don't notify you, then they can operate in residential premises. All right. There are 2,671 such workshops. If they store more than 130 liters and do not notify you, do you have an automatic checking system? If they operate in residential premises, is unimaginable. Government departments should collectively regulate inflammable gases. No, this is a big loophole. This is huge negligence. You assume that they'll exercise self-discipline. They'll notify you if they store more than 130 liters. If they don't notify you, even if they store 200 to 300 liters, if there's an explosion, it can become a major accident. So if they don't notify you. You will disregard them. Why is there such huge negligence? Yes, now we had an accident, so everybody was scared. But before that incident, why is it that you totally disregarded these workshops? You should proactively carry out sudden checks on these two thousand six hundred and seventy-one. Workshops. Environment Bureau, is it that we never inspected those vehicle workshops? Well, Mr. Pang said that they would not proactively inspect these workshops to see whether or not they're storing more than. 130 liters. Well, they don't have routine checks, but they have risk assessment. Why is it that certain workshops are inspected biannually, that is, twice per year, while others are not regulated under any rules, regulations, or procedures? Well, they carry out risk assessment. As for the frequency of inspection. Do you admit that this is serious negligence on the part of the government? The most important point is risk. Do you admit that that was serious negligence? Well, we do have a regulatory regime. We did carry out inspections, but just now, Mr. Pang said that they did not proactively carry out inspections. As far as I understand, there are two possibilities for inspection. First, they may receive complaints, and then second, 
when the residents will, for both, you do not proactively inspect the premises. You are acting passively only. Next, Dr. Lo Wai Kwok. Thank you, Chairman. In the first round, I asked questions, and Mr. Pang, the assistant director, said that there are four guidelines in relation to repair and maintenance of such workshops. And if there's any re irregularity, prosecution may be taken out. Is it correct to understand that these practice guidelines are legally binding on the workshops, right? If so, may I know how many inspections and how many prosecutions have been taken out? And just now we understood that for such vehicle workshops, storing less than 130 liters, you impose the four guidelines and codes on them, and they are required to hire competent persons class 6. If they want to register, you should inspect them under the guidelines and codes, such that when you arrive at the premises, you can check whether or not competent persons class 6 are hired and whether or not workshop facilities are up to standard. Then car owners and drivers can set their mind at ease when they bring their vehicles to these workshops for repair and maintenance. Well, let me say something about the code. The codes are not statutory documents. They're just administrative measures. They're promulgated administratively. First of all, they may carry statutory requirements. That's very clear. There are non-statutory requirements which we also want the industry to observe that will make the operations safer. We'll see whether or not a workshop is observing the guidelines and codes. If there are breaches, we may take up prosecution. We may even refer cases to other departments. Just recently, we issued a joint letter from the EMSD Buildings Department and the Labor Department. That joint letter reminded vehicle workshops of safety requirements on them. If they don't meet the requirements, the workshop concerned would be referred to the Buildings Department, which will then examine the location of the workshop and the safety requirements. Our department may consider consequential action. So among departments, we have a coordination regime. Other departments can consider whether a certain workshop is posing safety threats on the public. All right, you said that after an inspection, you may take out prosecution in accordance with laws, codes, and guidelines. You may make referrals. You may issue advisories and so forth. So in your written reply, please give us the relevant data for the past three years or past five years, even more desirable. All right. You shouldn't just have a registration. You should have a checking mechanism or vetting mechanism. Let me reply. According to the voluntary registration scheme, when a vehicle workshop registers, it has to tell us its location, whether it is in residential premises, whether they repair and maintain LPG vehicles. If they repair and maintain LPG vehicles, whether or not they have hired competent persons class 6. So they have to satisfy the practice guidelines for vehicle maintenance workshops.
Under these guidelines, when they apply, we'll vet the application to see whether they meet our requirements. By vetting, do you also cover on-site inspection? Sorry, Dr. Lo Wai Kwok, we've only two minutes left. Can you let me chair the meeting? Well, he just replied to my questions. Well, I suggest that we extend the meeting by another 15 minutes because we still have Mr. Wu Chi Wai for the second round and Mr. James Stowe for the first round. Any objection? If there's no objection, a further extension of 15 minutes for our meeting. Mr. James So, well, in fact, before you arrived, I had already drawn a line. Yes, you have drawn a line, but if you allow us more time, you should accord priority to the first round. All right. May I refer you to Annex A of the paper, Regulations on Storage of Dangerous Goods in Vehicle Workshops and Exemption. You say in Part 3 that the FSD will continue to enforce the DGO. Well, we have representatives from the FSD here. Do you have any plan to carry out sudden checks on these vehicle workshops for the storage of dangerous goods? Yes or no? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, the Honorable Member. Concerning the inspection of vehicle workshops, we don't specify which premises. We inspect buildings and premises. So when we pass by, we'll see whether there's any storage of dangerous goods. If the amount is excessive, we may take out prosecution. Well, I understand that uh, you have a program for inspecting dangerous goods stores. Yes, a license is required for um, setting up a dangerous goods store. So, as far as dangerous goods are concerned in vehicle workshops, can you set up a program for in inspections? Now, because the license uh, will have to be renewed, then definitely there will be inspections. And I'm not talking about dangerous goods stores. I'm talking about vehicle workshops which may store uh, dangerous goods uh, to a level exceeding the permitted limit. Will you set up a program? Uh, we take a risk-oriented approach in our inspection effort. Over the past few months, we inspected, uh, we carried out over 3,000 inspections on vehicle workshops and identified six uh, cases in which um, excessive dangerous goods were stored, and we took immediate follow-up action. Well, Chairman, just now, according to the director, you talked about the three. Um, what happened after? Uh, oh, Three months uh, over the past three months. So uh, after the uh, um Tai Sin incident, you still haven't had a program for inspections. Then we go back and consider a program, especially for inspecting vehicle workshops. I'm asking whether you will consider this. That is for vehicle workshops. Will you ha set up a dedicated program uh, to inspect? Vehicle workshops as a category. I'm not saying that you should inspect all of them. Yes, we'll consider it. Yes, he will. Yeah, we have um, other efforts made. We have um, publicity effort, for example. Well, I'm talking about a program. Let's say um, 50 workshops will be randomly inspected per year, or uh, all workshops will be inspected once every three years. Last one, Mr. Wuchi Wai. I think Mr. James To asked already asked the question I had wanted to ask, because we're talking about a regulatory uh, framework which doesn't include um, regular inspection. Is that right? Who would take the question? I'll defer to the relevant department. Well, the EMSD will respond. The EMSD has stepped up the inspection effort, and in the in June we already inspected all the 2,700 workshops, and will continue to take the risk-oriented uh, approach in our inspections. 
then can you tell us or can you give us a plan uh, on regular inspections and also the enforcement of regular inspections over the past three years? You're asking for a um, written reply, or perhaps he could, yes, um, give us a written reply. Is it the case? Is it, is it the same case for the uh, FSD? Because you said that when you inspect. Um, for endangered goods, you basically checked whether the dangerous goods stored would exceed the level permitted under the dangerous goods ordinance. But if you don't go into the workshop, how could you check um, the level, whether it's excessive? Um, how could you, by uh, visual inspection, know whether it's excessive or not? We have the plan to do so. So not in the past. No, we did not specifically look into that. What about the Labor Department? Well, because the Labor Department said that it would also check if um, paint spraying is, is carried out in workshops. We have regular inspections as well. I can give you some figures. Over the past three years, between 2012 and 2014, over the past three years, we inspected. We had four that over 4,100 inspections on vehicle workshops, and we had 15 prosecutions. So, did you register uh, workshops uh, voluntarily registered, or all of them? All of them, because we um, do not need to consider whether they are voluntarily registered or not. We carry out regular inspections uh, on uh, existing vehicle workshops as well as new workshops. So, Chairman, I ask the departments to give us information on regular inspections and the relevant inspection records over the past three years. You have the record, right? Um, I also want to ask the EPD because the EPD is also involved uh, in the uh, um, Switch discharge. I want to know if the EPD has a regular inspection program as well. Over the past three years, the EPD ins carried out 3,200 plus inspections based on complaints, and we also took the initiative to inspect larger vehicle workshops. So you did not act. Um, proactively inspect uh, smaller vehicle workshops, then will you f devise a plan uh, for regular inspections? We'll consider your c uh, suggestion. So I just want to make it clear by saying you consider my suggestion. Does it mean that you decide not? You can decide not to um, uh, have this uh, plan. Uh, we will actively consider your suggestion. So when will you come back and report to us? Because it's also related to other pollution control regulations, so you actively consider the suggestion. All right. So, meetings adjourned today. But before I do so, I want to thank the THB. Although in this incident, uh, your bureau is not the lead bureau. But at least you coordinated matters uh, so that we know which government departments uh, should be here to answer questions. Well, the issue is very complex, and uh, the government departments uh, have only been able to answer uh, part of the questions. But I think the answers are positive. So thank you. Meetings adjourned.